guys. It is time for your Wednesday live chat for Players Championship. What will we cover? It's up to you. Whatever you want. Questions, concerns, comments, get them in the chat. Usually revolves around one and done options, fantasy plays, deep dives into golfers, who's going to be the first round leader, yada, 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 right? That something of that nature or really anything you want. I don't care. I have nothing to do for the next five hours. So I guess I'm good for a while. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Let's jump into this. Sam says, any love for Brian Harmon? Actually, Sam, hold that thought. I got, I got two out in front of myself. Let's do the weather first so that we don't have to talk about it ever again. Here is the 10 day for Ponte Vedra Beach for the Players Championship Thursday morning. Clean, no wind. I shouldn't say no wind, three miles an hour, maybe a little bit more in the afternoon, six, seven, eight miles an hour. Not a big deal. Friday, uh, it's basically similar. Get a couple more mile an hour of wind in the afternoon. You might get some Saturday thunderstorms, but early more or uh, the the pre cut looks pretty clean. Okay, so I think we're done with weather. We don't really need to probably talk about that again for the rest of the show. Sam says, "Any love for Brian Harmon? Let's get into it. Everything I show you from here on out will probably be from my website, RickRunGood.com. You should go check it out. Why wouldn't you? It's a giant database for golf betting and uh, fantasy golf, and it's got a lot of really cool tools and sweet stuff. Let me zoom in here so you can see this. Here's the thing with Brian Harmon: the skill set that he has." that led to his open championship victory is the same skill set that will be handy here. He's an elite driver. And by that, I mean accuracy. He was able to avoid all the trouble at, in Hoy Lake uh, because he just kept it in play and he kept it in the fairway. He will not be able to avoid all trouble at TPC uh, at Sawgrass from just playing from the fairway but it will eliminate a lot of it. So I do like that. He has been, uh, he has not been good, right? 2024, his, his, his season metrics, the tournament by tournament stuff, it's not good, but I do think that Brian Harmon falls into the category of we know what we're going to get, right? You can kind of revert him back to his 100 round baseline. You can get a chance to buy a little bit low. You do get one elite skill set. You get a guy who's won a major championship before. I get it. I get it, right? So I am in on, on Brian. Any thoughts on Scott Stallings? Man, we are really just, we're just digging right now. We're going to go straight to Scott Stallings. I can't imagine I'm too interested in Scott Stallings. He hasn't popped up in any of the research that I've done throughout the week. He really drives it poorly. He's lost strokes off the tee in five straight. We go and look at his season-long stats. He sprays it. Um, 168th in driving accuracy, 155th from distance from edge of fairway. If we go back to last year, Barely better, 143rd in both of those categories. If you are missing and missing big off the tee, that's trouble spot number one. Trouble spot number two was you you, you now have to make up for that. You've, you've got to fix it. You've got to make sure you're not compounding those mistakes. The other problem is the rest of his game isn't very good either, right? He's lost strokes uh, putting and a lot of them in three straight in six out of eight. It's just, this is, this is, not a stat profile that gets me excited. And that's four cuts and five starts. So no, sorry. Four and a half percent on Tommy Fleetwood. WTF am I missing? All right. So I've got Tommy. Yeah. 5% right now. This is the updated uh, projections on the cheat sheet at rickrungood.com. 5% ownership. I think that in general, the $8,000 price range is pretty thin. Most people have opted to go with Scotty uh, or piling up ownership in the in the 9K range. The 8K range kind of getting forgotten a little bit. You can see Ludwig Oberg, Sam Burns, Shane Lowry getting a lot of love at the bottom of the 9K range. So it leaves a lot of the guys at the top of the eight a little bit untouched. So I think it is just a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, I don't know what the word is. It's, no, not outlier. Oh, great. <laughs> Armina just threw out a suggestion and then admitted she was not listening to anything. It, it's a byproduct of the way that the, the, the salaries have come out. Eight strokes he lost on approach at Bay Hill. Now we remember how many of those were on number six alone in round number one, where he put multiple balls in the water. 
Uh, I think that a lot of Florida golf courses, if you put up a big number and miss the cut in a big way, I don't really care all that much. That's possible. The rest of his golf has been really good going back to the European tour, which by the way, rickrungood.com, six different tours, strokes game data. So if you're only looking at Tommy's PGA tour stuff, it doesn't look nearly as good as the, the golf he's been playing globally. Sam Burns versus Victor versus JT for one and done. I'm in the middle of the road in 11 person pool. Oh, uh, 11 person pool. You should probably just play Justin Thomas. What would good picks for a three ball be this week? Well, I don't know. Uh, go to the Rick run good, uh, head to head matchup, go to the three balls and see what you can get. See, I don't know what, go see what's out there. Right. So if, in this example, if you could get Scotty Scheffler at more than plus one eighty nine, which I cannot imagine you would against can't or Rory McIlroy, that would be interesting. You can put in any number of rounds that you want. You can put in any golfers that you want and you can check it out from there. Can we get a deep dive on Sam Burns? Yeah, I'm pretty bullish on Sam Burns. I'll pull up his stat profile here, but uh, he's played a lot better golf than I think even the finishing positions indicate. The T30 at Bay Hill was with a just horrible Sunday, right? He made triple on the first hole. I think he made another triple later in the week. You look at what he did at Riviera, three really good rounds. So we've got six out of his last eight are great. Uh, Phoenix, he was great throughout the week. So now that's 10 of his last 12 rounds have been awesome. Pebble beach, all three were good. So that's 13 out of 15 and the American express. He had three really good rounds and one bad Sunday. So that is 16 out of, oh God, I lost track 19. So 16 of his last 19 rounds have been very good. And his skill set. Being a good enough ball striker, being long enough off the tee, being an elite putter. And I just kind of like the detriment, the detriment, the disposition probably is the word I was looking for. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty, pretty bullish on Sam Burns. I see value says Mitchell in Patrick Rogers doesn't have great course history, but drives a great top and green regulation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I don't really care about um, course history so much this week. This is a golf course that is really, really volatile year over year. You're talking about guys, even Scotty Scheffler went like miscut 50th win. Uh, Roy McElroy, who bookended his win with two miscuts and missed the cut last year. Xander Shoffley, runner up, miscut, miscut, miscut 19th, right? I mean, it's just like this course eats you up and spits you out. It's very, it is not sticky at all. So I don't really care about course history all that much. Rogers is a good driver um, on golf courses where he can. So, so Mexico is such a good spot for him because you can hit it far without worrying about where it lands. Uh, you know, accuracy doesn't matter as much. So he gains five strokes there, but look at the places. Look at when he goes to a place where accuracy matters even a little bit. Pebble Beach, he loses off the tee because he, and also that's a one of the shortest dr average driving courses on the PGA Tour, so he cannot use his weapon there. Riviera, he's a zero driver. Uh, Bay Hill, a slightly negative. What I mean, what is what is all of this saying? It, unless it's a golf course that is long and wide open. Uh, he doesn't really drive. He doesn't gain off the tee. So that's troublesome. And then I don't think the rest of his game is, is really good enough to contend. Small field tournament with friends, 10 person DK scoring. Can you rank? Oh boy. Um, Burns, Lowry on Siwu Mitchell, Novak. Oh, also Novak or Carson Young. Okay. I would go Burns. Lowry on Mitchell Sewell is probably the order that I would go. And then I would say Novak over Carson Young. He also says, congrats on going to the Masters. Yeah, so the word is out. Uh, I am going to the Masters this year. I'm going to be with CBS Sports HQ as part of that coverage, which is very exciting. I'll also be at PGA Championship in Louisville. I have to work on that. Um, details to follow, but obviously very excited for, for both of those things. How much of a madman would I have to be to fade a 12.8K, 30% owned uh, Scotty. Probably not that much of a madman. I, I get it. Listen, I, I beat the drum more than anybody about how good Scotty is from tee to green. 
about how if he just puts to a zero, he wins. How if he if he gains four strokes with the putter, like he did at Bay Hill, he's going to win by five. I get all of that. Nobody loves what Scotty's doing statistically more than I do. But if there was ever a golf course, a price, and an ownership to fade, it would be now. A very volatile golf course, a price that is even more expensive than normal because we have the larger range of pricing this week, you know, 12, 8, all the way down to 5,000, and a 32% ownership. You could argue, honestly, that if once any golfer in any event gets to like 25% owned, you should really be pumping the brakes. Now, if you want to make exceptions for Jordan Spieth at the Masters and Rory McElroy at Quail Hollow and all that, like I get it. But this, this is a really tough pill to swallow. That's my opinion. Uh, will Montgomery and or Higo be able to avoid the water? If I knew that, I would um, I'd find a way to profit off of it. I would, my guess is no. Thoughts on Willie Z for one and done. All right, let's 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 dive a little bit deeper into the one and done conversation. Um, and we'll kind of gradually do this as we go as well. So let's pull up the, the one and done projected ownership. So Scotty Scheffler is going to be in about 30% of one and done entries. Hideki, about 13 and a half. Will Zalatoris, 12. Justin Thomas, 10. Those are the guys in double digits. Then you can get uh, Victor, Max Homa, Wyndham Clark, Xander, et cetera, for the next tier. Zalatoris specifically, I'm incredibly bullish on Zalatoris. Uh, what you have to figure out is, are you comfortable with a miscut? Every single golfer is in play for a miscut this week. Every single golf. The other thing is, uh, the top end guys are going to play signature events in which they're going to get a field half this size. Okay. So if you think you can use Zalatoris at a signature event, you should probably save him. If not, then use him this week. The other thing is, um, you know, is there a different spot to use him that might not be a signature event in which the prize purse would be different? So he, here's the way that I look at this board. If you want to, uh, like playing Scotty at 30% seems insane, but if you are in the top 10 ish percent of your league, that might be a good option for you. You can see where I've gone in this one specifically, Hideki. Um, I think that I will have a lot of Hideki this week. I think that I will have a lot of Justin Thomas this week, and I'm starting to convince myself to get access to a little bit of Xander Shoffley and Rory McIlroy. Let me talk this through for a second. If Hideki misses the cut this week, I don't really care. I used Hideki. It wasn't that big of a loss because everybody has a big miscut risk. I also think he's playing well enough to win it. Zalatoris, I kind of feel similar about. And JT, I feel JT's been one of the best players in the world since the Wyndham Championship last year. I actually put it in my newsletter for this week. If you're not subscribed to this, it's 100% free. There's a link in the description. It's rickrungood.com slash newsletter. Since the Wyndham Championship of last year, Justin Thomas is, is the second best player in the world behind Ludwig Oberg. Okay. He's gaining 1.9 strokes uh, per round. This is a place that he's, I think he sets up good for, not great. And he's one app, but again, I don't really care about that. So those are going to be likely my most usages. Uh, there's also a pretty good case to be made for Xander at 4.7% and for Rory at 46 The argument for Rory is that he's the second best uh, second best odds in this field um, at 4.6% 4 to get the second best player in the world or the third best player in the world and a four and a half million dollar first prize is a little bit too good to pass up. Uh, although I, I, I will likely say like, you know, you can get Rory at the travelers or Xander at the travelers with against 70 guys in a purse. That's very similar to this and an almost guaranteed four rounds at a golf course. That's a lot more predictable, you know, Rory, even Rory at the masters, a lot more predictable. JT at the Masters, right? So I, the guy that I'm running out this week is someone that I think can win, but I don't mind being a having be a sacrificial lamb, if that makes sense. And I'm okay with JT. I also might go to Homa, right? You know, the the 
the secret with Max Homa. So this is the, the other thing that I wrote about. I think I wrote about this. Um, the places that are best for Max Homa are, are done, right? So if you go to this, go to the Holy Grail, go to the course horses, look up, uh, you know, just Max Homa, right? And the places that he's played the best in his career, you know, minimum of 10 rounds or so, Riviera, done. Tory done. Sawgrass this week. Bay Hill, done. Muirfield Village, that you could save him for that. Scottsdale, done. Pebble, done. Quail Hollow is coming up. Like we, we've used a lot of the good spots already. I wouldn't mind running out Homa. If you go with Xander, let's look at Xander's stuff. Xander's best courses um, of, of events that still exist. Scottsdale, that's done. East Lake, could you save Xander for East Lake? Travelers, yeah, might be a good spot for him there. Muirfield Village, there's a couple good spots for Xander left as well. JT Homa, probably the route I'm going. Sorry, that got me on a really long. I'll also do this. I mean, while we're in this conversation, so this is the the tool from Pool Genius that I consulted on. They built it, I consulted on it. My best, this is my best entry. So you put in how many people are in your pool, what the payouts are, you put the rules in, you put your picks in, and then it gives you like great data every single week. So this is my best entry. I've already used Scotty. I've already used Justin Thomas. It wants me to use Rory, but then look who's next, Xander and Max Homa, because it knows future value. It knows that those guys have, that Homa's already used, been used, uh, all his best spots are already behind him. This is a good spot for him, et cetera, et cetera. So I love this tool and I love that it kind of validated what I was thinking. Uh, but this is my short list of of golfers here. You should sign up for this. There's a free trial going on right now. The link is in the description. Um, it's a very, very good tool. And if you put your information into it, you can put all your entries in. If you put how many people are in it, what the payouts are, who you've picked already, it becomes even, it, it's a really, really valuable tool, obviously. So check it out. All right. Sorry. That was a long one, but I think that covers a lot. Is Jordan Spieth a good tournament pivot? in the 9k range is the next question. Well, let's first check his ownership. I've got him about 7%. Okay. So it would be, it does check off that box in terms of if he's actually uh, a pivot. Let's look at his metrics here. I think he's been more accurate off the tee. Well, no, I thought he was better than that. 90th in accuracy. Uh, it, okay. It technically is better than last year, but he's still spraying a little bit. Um, he has cooled off, you know, even at Riviera. So I get, he was in 20th, but he was a little bit relying on, on the short game there. Um, his ball striking has cooled off in the last three. I'm more bearish than bullish. Um, <laughs> I don't want to let Rick down. So I'm going to ask uh, what his betting card is for this week. So I'll pull it up real quick, but the only two bets I've made for this week are um, Zalatoris and Justin Thomas, I believe. Let me confirm that. Yeah. Thomas at 25 Zalatoris at 28. I did also bet. I bet Rory to miss the cut at plus two, 275. I also bet Matt Fitzpatrick to miss the cut at plus 130. Um, I also bet Will Zaltorst to win the Masters. I also bet Adam Scott to win the Masters. That's what I'm up to right now. I do guess, I imagine I should, God, I don't, I don't want to get to the Masters with a full card, but I probably should bet Justin Thomas to win the Masters. If Justin Thomas wins this week, I'm going to get a really bad number. So I'll, I'll bet JT to win the masters right now at 28 to one. So I've got three, I already have three masters bets in. So I'm, I'm running low. All right. Hoagie is mega chalk. Uh, are you eating the chalk? I don't want to eat the chalk for really anybody this week. Hoagie is, what do we have Hoagie at? Uh, yeah, 16%. If there was going to be a guy I'd eat the chalk on, it would be Tom Hoagie. Uh, look at what he's been the best second shot player in the world for 
a while. Look at these numbers. Plus eight at Bay Hill, plus four at Cognizant, plus seven at Riv. Just elite, elite stuff. The putter is going well. He's he's played, I think, all but one event in 2024, which is absolutely nuts. And I don't care about this, but he's got like four straight top 30s here. So if you do care about that, that side's good too. So there's a reason why he's chalk. Um, if I was going to eat chalk, it would probably be here for a, a mid-priced, really high-end metric play, as opposed to like a 35% Scotty Scheffler, if that makes sense. Is Aaron Rye a good option? Aaron Rye, there was a lot of we're gonna, there was a lot of Aaron Rye comments, so we can talk about Aaron Rye and then um, I can kind of skip over a, a, a lot of those. So here's what we got. He did play in Puerto Rico. He finished 23rd. I think he gained every single day. Now he lost a little bit on Saturday. That's okay. 19th in Mexico. Those are the last two times we we saw him. He's been a little bit more inconsistent than I would have liked. You know, he's missed the cut in Phoenix. He missed the cut at the American Express. That's kind of outside of his norm because you see what he did on the european tour right runner-up finish at the bmw pga two top tens in qatar and at the ned bank <sighs> again probably more bearish than bullish here love the love the the skill set that he has but he i think he's trending a little bit in the in the wrong direction do you think somebody throwing a single dart in the millie maker has to have scotty i think the opposite right if you're throwing a single dart you should probably not play scotty Rank these three stats in order of importance. Approach T to green and off the T. Um, well, that's not really fair because T to green encompasses both of those. So it's not a fair fight. But um, it, it, the answer to your question would be off the T, then approach, then T to green, even though you know, you're double counting. Is Collins' form really that bad? Um. Sure, he missed the API cut badly, but two top 20s before that with decent SG numbers seems to be all right. <sighs> They're bad for him, right? There's a lot of guys in the world who would take this form. He actually hasn't even played all that much. He's played five times since January. He's, I mean, he played the hero. He didn't play at all in November. He hasn't played that much. The driver's not good. The approach play is well below his average. The short game kind of stinks and the putter's all over the place. Yeah, for Colin, that's really bad. Who's a good first round leader? Well, let's go to the power rankings. Oh, did I not? Oh, I did load up the power rankings. Let's go to strokes gain distribution. Let's go to five or more strokes gain to the field. Let's go to the last 150 rounds with a minimum of 20 and find... The guys who gain five or more the most frequently. Okay. Well, very little surprises. Nap, Day, Cantlay, Scheffler, Keegan. Keegan's a notorious great first round leader. Cantlay has been and is this year and then struggles after that. Let's look at Cantlay real quick. So let's go to the Holy Grail. Strokes gained by round. Let's just do round number one. Everybody in this field since the start of 2022. Here's Cantlay. He's gaining nearly two strokes per round. The only guys better, I'll, I'll rule out Steve Stricker, but Rory and Scotty are the only guys better. Rio Hisatsune, also great if you're looking for value. So yeah, I think Cam Young, Max Homa, Jake Knapp, Shane Lowry, if you want to go like 50 to one would be interesting. Lowry plays, uh, gets off to, he gets off to good starts and he is all, he's like a Brian Harmon in like keeping it in the, keeping it in play, stuff like that. Good morning, Rick really stuck between Zalatoris, JT Homa and Burns for one and done. I'm in the middle of the pack for a hundred person pool. You should probably play JT or Homa would be fine. Uh, this is true. Accidentally. Yes. Yeah. We had the time zone wrong. So Armina's taking, I wasn't going to throw her under the bus, but this was Armina's fault. She said it for 12 Eastern uh, instead of 12 Pacific. It's okay. There's no, it's, it's okay. She was in Boston. So she said it for the wrong time. It's okay. But yes, we're, 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 we're okay now. Um, can we look at Alex Norin? Yes. Accurate and can scramble is the comment. 
very accurate, rarely misses, and when he does miss, uh, rarely does he miss left, which is kind of good. The, the, the issue is he's not super good on like his mid to long irons. He is a very good putter. And I feel like he's pretty good in Florida. Let me just look just for kicks. Let's do Arnold Palmer, Cognizant, Players, and Valspar. Also, here's what also I'll do. I'll do like a strokes gain Florida swing in a second. These are decent numbers in Florida for him. I mean, he missed the cut at the players last year. Don't care. T61 at Bay Hill, but he's got top bunch of top 25s. Watch this. Let's go to the Holy Grail and do the same thing. Since the start of 2021, everybody in this field, let's say players, whoops, players, Valspar, uh, Cognizant, API. Am I missing one? I feel like I am missing one. There is another Florida event, isn't there? I thought there was five in the Florida swing. Um, ah, it's okay. Either way, this is this is plenty. Scotty Scheffler, number one. JT, great in Florida. Max Homa, great in Florida. Victor Hovland, Keegan Bradley, Shane Lowry, Corey Connors. Matt Fitzpatrick. I did bet Matt Fitzpatrick to miss the cut. I feel like I'm missing one event, though. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Answered that. Answered that. Can we get a model? Sure. Let's run a model. RickRunGood.com custom model. This says, uh, let me zoom. I got to zoom out a little bit. Um, which by the way, sometimes I get questions like, how come I can't see, depending on your screen size and resolution, zoom in and zoom out. That'll, that'll help you a lot. Then I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. But, uh, zooming in and out helps, helps, helps quite a bit. All right, bogey avoidance, driving accuracy, and strokes gained approach. So bogey avoidance, driving accuracy, says Gary. So driving accuracy and strokes gained approach. What do you want? Strokes gained last 36. Let's do last 36. Strokes gained approach last 36. Our number one golfer, or Gary's number one golfer, is Doug Gim. Gary's number two golfer is Scotty Scheffler, Lucas Glover, Carson Young, Chan Kim, Aaron Rye, Grayson Sig, Russell Henley, Colin Morikawa, Andrew Putnam. Do with that what you will. Is there any way to manipulate the data to exclude Zalatoris's rehab rounds? Feel like that's skewing a lot of data, especially for the last 36. Yeah, for sure it is. Bless you. For sure it is. So if you go to the rolling, let's see if I can get this rolling report for Will. Uh, last, well, I got 150 in there. Like if you do last 12, I bet you he's probably one of the best players in the field. Let's check this out. It's going to take, it's going to take a second to load. I'm running my, uh, okay. Yeah. So last 12 or yeah, last 12, he's, he's second in this field. Last 36, he's 127. So, um, I'll pull up his stat profile so that we can look at that. No, there's not a way to exclude it. <laughs> it's a good, that's a good question though. Maybe I should figure that out. Yeah. Eh, I don't know. Okay. Um, debating between Hideki and Homa. And, and no, no reasons to have Hideki. Okay. So Jimmy Stanger, last man in the field. Jimmy Stanger got in thanks to his run at Puerto Rico last week. Uh, he's had a decent start to 2024. Right, he's missed a couple of cuts, but he's got the 14th of the American Express, the third in Puerto Rico. He had a win on the Corn Ferry last June. He is a good driver, uh, both accurate and long. 50th in accuracy, 57th in distance. That will play a lot here. He will struggle on the second shot. Right, he'll struggle uh, once he gets outside of kind of wedge area. But he does not three putt very often. He hits a lot of uh, par fives in two. He makes a lot of birdies. It's it's going to be a matter of those longer approaches for Jimmy. If he can if he can be tour or field average there or lose just a little bit, um, he's a pretty good option as a value play. Obviously, 
<laughs> Rick must be on the new Greg time zone this week. Don't do not get me started there. Um, Morikawa and Harmon or Burns and on. Burns and on for me. Deep dive. Oh, this is nice. I just get a, a pick here. So deep dive any that you think are intriguing. Spieth, Oberg, Finau, McCarthy, Nick Taylor. Let's do Finau because in a normal world, the way that he drives, it should be pretty valuable here. The ball striking is top notch. The short game is bottom notch. I will give him credit for... So so there's two things here. Um, he gained strokes putting in Mexico. Now that's on Paz Palum. It's a different strain of grass. It's a course he's had success on. But so it passes the stat test, but it also started to pass the eye test a little bit. His putter used to be, he used to have the toe way up in the air. Now it's a little bit more flat, which I think is better for him and might also be part of the reason in which he putted better in Mexico. So if you're willing to throw a dart, this is not a bad dart to throw. I'm still worried, but this is like cautiously optimistic and worried. One and done sitting seventh, given the four and a half million dollar payout, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you're near the top, just play like the chalkiest guy you can. Uh, projected winning score. 16 under. There's still some birdies out there. You'll see a big range of scores. The weather seems pretty good. Maybe 17. Congrats on the Masters. Thank you. I'm free for an assistant. I'm sure you are. Uh, thank you, though. No, I'm very excited. Okay, so I did see that I did see that DraftKings added pick six and uh one and done. I have not had a chance to get into either of those. The way they do pick six is different. I, I, I admittedly have to spend more time. I've, I've not gotten into it. It's peer versus peer, I believe, which changes. It, it, I, I haven't loved it because it changes the payout structure from what I understand, but I'll, I, I need to do a deeper dive. There was a question about, uh, or I'm going to come up on a question. This feels like a good time for it for props because and there's a lot to talk about with props so i i am gonna ask armina to introduce us to the underdog portion of the show woof, woof. Oh, so loud okay good job so okay the underdog stuff's awesome the partnership for me has for everybody i hope has been a raging success right we've got not only uh best ball drafts there's another best ball in season best ball coming up there are there's major championship only best balls which i've been i've been doing all that stuff is great and look at how many options there are for props this week so i want to go through a couple of these i did send out in my email newsletter i'm sure these lines are gone at this point but i thought the rory McIlroy line on bogeys was too low the matt fitzpatrick line on bogeys was too low adam scott strokes russell henley strokes i'm sure those are gone by now let's just let's just check rory's bogeys uh oh okay so i also kind of like this too instead of adjusting the hook right instead of i i think it was right so instead of going to 3.0 bogeys they just they just lowered it to a 0.9x multiplier which i'm i'm better with that than going to a 3.0. So you can still, it does look like you can still get these. The other thing was, uh, I can't see it because I'm logged in. There is a free space for us this week. So I'll, the link's in the description, but you should be able to see this Victor Hovland free space if you're a new user. That was a miscommunication on my part. I thought it was everybody. It's new users. Uh, we got our wires crossed with underdog. But they said, they said, who would most resonate with your audience? I said, give me a Victor prop. So as soon as Victor tees off and takes one stroke, that's a winner. Uh, and then you pair it with, with something else or you put it in everything else. So the link's in the description for that. Um, the one thing, so I'm waiting to see. I have not seen the pin positions yet. So if there is a non-front pin, so a middle or a, 
I don't know if they'll do middle, but like a back that back left pin, the back right we know we know will save, be saved for Sunday, but a non front pin. I'm interested in the these. So basically, every player has a higher than 2.5 hole 17 stroke. So they're going to make par or worse. So you're fading that they don't make a birdie. Okay. When that pin is not in the bowl, 17 gets a lot more difficult and there's a lot more pars there. Um, it, it is kind of a birdie hole when that pins in the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the day and maybe it's tomorrow. I don't know. I haven't seen the pins yet for that back left pin and probably that back right pin. And I'm just going to stack up a bunch of afternoon um, par or uh, hole 17 higher strokes. Now you're not getting the full run at this, the full payout on this because there's odds on it. But I think stacking up a bunch of these for afternoon guys, because if you get to five of them, you get a 3.3 X return. Okay. So a hundred for 336. It's a little bit of picking up dimes in front of a steamroller. Like there's a chance you get bonked on this when someone makes a birdie, but that, that as long as it's not the front pin, I'm interested in that. I also thought the rivals were a little weird, right? So, and you can combine these, right? You could do like, like this. Um, both of these guys are kind of struggling, but I did not think that like Rory and Victor should probably not be in a matchup together. Rory's odds indicate something much, much better than that. You know, Cantlay versus Spieth. Cantlay way more consistent than Spieth. Um, there was like Adam, I'm an, I'm still an Adam Scott believer. I'm, I'm a, Sungjae's really struggled. I'm a Keegan over Sungjae believer. I'm a big Hideki over Fitzpatrick believer. Okay. Let's run this one. Let's do the last 12 rounds, which I know I'm cherry picking this for Hideki, but we can open it up after that. Hideki versus Matt Fitzpatrick feels a bit unfair. So let's let's just run this real quick. Hideki over Fitz. And, and if, if you can find this matchup somewhere, someone pointed out to me, but I can't imagine there's a book showing you this. Yeah, last 12 rounds, I have Hideki to win this matchup 84% of the time. Let's go 24, give Matt Fitzpatrick a little more help. I still have Hideki at 64%. Let's go to 36 rounds, which helps Fitzpatrick even more. I've got it at... That's where it flips, but shorter term, my goodness. So, so the fact that you can com combine these with the props or just do the matchups by themselves. I mean, Zalatoris over Colin Morikawa. What are we like? What are we kind of doing here? Right? So I think there's a lot of really good options. Um, the amount of props that are available is awesome. Leaderboard positions. Love that. So you guys get guys to finish inside the top 10. That doesn't even get to the drafts. So like there's so much good stuff going up, up on uh, Underdog. I've already tweeted a couple out. I'll continue to tweet them out throughout the week. So go get set up right now. Use the code Rick. There's a link in the description. It'll get you a deposit match. Get set up. I'll make sure to have plenty of Underdog stuff coming out this week and every week, quite honestly. Honestly. Okay. Back to the questions. Um. <laughs> I've answered a lot of these, which is nice. In GPPs, we want to limit sum and product ownership. We want to limit sum, sum and product ownership, but does that change with single entry or three max? Can your product ownership be higher due to condensed ownership? Well, then it says, also, I fixed the issue I was having. Uh, email me. I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, ben on or Tom Kim for me, it's Ben on just to give you the deep dive on Ben on Ben on's been spectacular, right? So not only has he been just the great T to green player, not only has he been very, uh, a good driver historically, but look at what he's done with the putter bunch of gains. He popped up on that Florida swing kind of stat results are coming T eight last week. It's, it's it's also signature events, right? So watch this, watch this, uh, 2024 signature events. So let's do this. Let's do API 
Pebble, uh, Century, and what was the last one I'm missing? That was a signature, not Genesis. Oh, uh, Genesis. Ben on of golfers who have played every signature event is the third best player in signature events. Scotty Scheffler's one, Cantlay's two, Ben on is three. Let's go. Can we do a deep dive on, on Doug Gim? Yes, quickly, because I spent a lot of time on him on Monday. He's got, what, four great finishes in a row. He's driving it very accurately. The tee to green numbers are spectacular. The putting has come around. He's a completely new golfer. Fire, fire, fire. Should Glover and Connor switch to a spider mallet? They should do something. Best of the pack in a one and done. Pick two. Scheffler, JT, Xander, Zalatoris, Decky, Cantlay. Uh, oh, back of the pack. Okay. Xander. Decky. Good luck. Uh, uh, pick two reminded me. The pick three, the, the three and done, starts this week. So if you want to go get in the three and done, where you pick three golfers for each major and the players, um, it's 500 bucks. It is legal and regulated in 41 states or so and DC. Uh, the link is in the description. So we're not going to fill this, but if we can get it to 100, I think that'd be great. That'd be what, 50K in the purse. And there are segment payouts for each tournament. And this is fun. I'm actually, someone said they were bummed this hasn't gotten more support. I agree. I thought a three and done for the players and the majors was going to be really popular. The metrics that Splash had thought that it was going to be really popular, honestly, that, that there was a, 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 a need for this. or a, a, So I don't know. Maybe it'll, we usually get a lot in the last couple hours, but I'm stunned we're not over 100 yet. Also, while you're over there, the, uh, the tiers contest, which I have not mentioned this week, my bad is, is completely guaranteed. This, this will almost like this will fill. There's always a late run on these because it's guaranteed $20 entry. Um, the 5k purse is completely guaranteed. You pick one golfer from each of six tiers, it's fun, easy while you're over there making your picks. You can, you can get in there. Um, I'm going to take a sip of water. Excuse me for a second. In a 30 man one and done. Is there a way to sort the field by top ball strikers? Yeah. So there's a ton of ways. Uh, you could go to the Holy Grail and you can look at whatever time period that you want. This is 2024 season. Go by ball striking. It's Scotty, Keith Mitchell, Rory, Tony Finau, Tom Hoagie. You could go to the power rankings and put in any number of rounds that you want, um, you know, last 50 rounds, minimum of 20 and only use rounds from the PGA tour, something like that. And after it loads, you'll see it's Scotty, Tom Hoagie, Victor Hovland, Eric Van Roy, and Corey Connors. So yeah, there's a, you could do it on the custom model. <laughs> there's a million, there's a million ways you could do that. Does Wyndham's poor fairway percentage scare you from taking him in a one and done? Um, no. So, so the, the way that I think about Wyndham is kind of like, I, I think Wyndham lives a little bit on the knife's edge, right? You know, I think that he's pretty volatile. He has literally the upside to win a major, a signature event, or he could miss the cut, right? Like he did at Riviera, or he could finish 41st in Phoenix, which was a little bit out of character. He can finish 56 at the Andalusia Masters like he did. The putter might lose him four straight. Like there's, there's ways this goes sideways for Wyndham. I actually think the good news is that um, there's a case to be made that for this event, which is volatile in nature, you should just ramp up your volatility. Just take the volatile guy at the volatile event and see what happens. Because it would be disastrous to lose Scotty to a miscut or to lose Rory to a miscut or lose whoever to a miscut. It wouldn't be that bad to lose Wyndham Clark to a miscut, honestly, because he might, because he might do it at a sticky event. He might do it at Riviera. He might do it at the masters. He might, you know what I mean? It's just, I will have, uh, I will have some one and done entries with Wyndham Clark in it. Hey Rick, congrats on Augusta. Thank you. Do we see any green shoots? Pointing to Straka. Green shoots. What does that mean? Let's just check out Sep Straka here. Oh, boy. 
you know, I could cut him some slack for the eight strokes he lost on approach at API, which is crazy. But I don't think I can cut him enough slack for the miscut at PGA National and Riviera by losing a bunch of strokes putting. He's not very long off the tee. T to green play struggling. No, no, I don't think I can get there. Okay. Congrats on the master's assignment, Rick. Thank you. I want to play a broomstick putter lineup. On Zalatoris Glover, can you name three others? Adam Scott. Um, is Maddie Schmidt in this field? I can check. Um, he is. Wow. Okay. I've got five broomstick putters. So hold on. On Zalatoris Glover, Maddie Schmidt, Adam Scott. Is Akshay in the field? Akshay would be another. He is in the field. There you go. Good job. Mina closes it out. Is it still pick on Rick season? Full swings got me in the fields. Yeah. Okay. So let's check. I mean, we'll give him the we will give him the benefit of the, of the doubt to check his profile. Whoops. It's better. I'm not sure I'm ready to say it's good. It's definitely better. Uh, putting is a little bit better. T to green play still worries me. He's getting there. What's he going to play after this? Is he going to play Valspar? This is definitely trending in the right direction. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> What's a good Ricky spot coming up? Holy grail course horses. Like I, I'm okay being early on Ricky. Quail hollow. That's too long from now. Uh, Houston's too long from now. Actually, I guess Houston's not that far. If he plays Houston, I mean, could we roll him out at Augusta? That'd be kind of sick. Muirfield village is probably too far. Detroit. Maybe we roll him out at Augusta. That would be really sick. Thoughts on EVR. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's me pick this week. Is that right? Okay. EVR is Mina's pick for this week. Let's check out the stat profile. A bunch of really good finishes. Uh, one missed cut, which was Phoenix. Uh, she barely missed the cut. The rest of it's really good. He clearly turned into a different golfer basically last summer. Um, I want to look at his stats though real quick. I worry about the, he's very, he's a pretty good long iron player. I worry about the accuracy off the tee. Scoring's decent. Okay. Yeah. Six and a half, seven out of 10. How do you feel about Saquon Barkley? I, I'm hoping it is uh, akin to Christian McCaffrey going to the Niners. Change of scenery and he just becomes an MVP. That'd be sick, right? Is Nick Taylor a baller now? I think Nick Taylor has been a baller, right? Nick Taylor's won a couple of times in his last 12 starts. Um, has played well at signature events. Gained throughout the bag. At Bay Hill, yeah, like I think Nick Taylor's kind of been a baller. No salary, pick any four this week. Um, Scotty, Rory, Xander, and Cantlay. I, that wasn't very exciting, was it? Who are your three? Who rank these golfers in terms of who you think will have the best chances to win? Hideki, Spieth, and Minwoo. That's the right order. Uh. First time, long time. Oh, I, I answered that one. Okay. I'm in a players and masters one and done. Come get into the three and done. I'm fading Scheffler and keeping it for the masters. Am I crazy or just crazy enough? I think that's probably smart. Smaller field. Gave out. I talked about the underdog plays. With golfers clubbing down this week. I don't know if I agree with that, right? What am I missing, Tyler? This is an event played in, this event being played in March is way more driver heavy than this event in May. So I don't, I think this is a lot, I think this is driver heavy. Okay, I, I skipped like four questions about Russell Henley because I knew they were, and there was like a million of them. So, Let's do the Henley stuff. Accurate off the tee, great second shot player, has been getting better. Um, 
I, I, I mean, listen, I want to pump the brakes here. I think Russell Henley is a, a, a very good player. I don't think he's a great player. I think that the good news is if, if you're trying to use Russell Henley, I wouldn't be betting him outright. I wouldn't be using him, him, in, him in a one and done. I would be um, probably using him in DFS, which is him living in that 8K range, uh, which is kind of a dead, dead zone. And getting him at 11% is pretty good. Because I think if he were in a different range or if the pricing was a little bit different, um, he, he'd be like 20%. Uh, realistically. So I, I, I think that's the way to deploy him. Uh, if a golfer is, uh, I, my scroll was weird, but it said if a golfer is, uh, ranked well in driving accuracy, but not in distance from edge of fairway, does that, it, it means when he misses, he misses big. Does Rick like Webb Simpson this week? I, I love Webb Simpson as a person. Very, has always been very nice to me. Great guy. Great player. How could you like anything about his game? It's just not... I mean, the T30 at Bay Hill... Uh, who Like, I don't know. Who cares? Like, this is not good. It's not good enough. It's just not good enough, unfortunately. Do you put any stock... Ah, Mark got me. Did you put any stock into the trend that 15 of the last 17 winners have had a Thursday morning AM tea time? No. Because what would the argument be? What would the argument be? First off, tea times are made up, right? They put the, they make sure everybody's spread out and in a good spot. And also, uh, the only, I guess maybe I would care more if, uh, like, there was a wave advantage this week, or if um, if we had this stat for every single, like, like you can't just give me the 15 out of 17 for one event. What if every other event is 17 out of 17? Like, I know it's not, but you get what I'm saying, right? So no, I don't care about that trend at all. Who is the lowest owned guy who excels at off the tee and approach? Oh, okay. So um, let's just, like, let's just do this then. Let's just do ball striking, um, low owned guys. I mean, Victor, 9%. Um, Kevin Yu gains a stroke ball striking. He's 1.75%. I mean, there's, there's a ton. I feel like I have the perfect lineup with my first five. I have $6,300 left. Who would you finish the lineup with? I would finish it with... Either McNeely or Hisatsne. That that's probably it. Rick, you were in my dreams last night. Oh, thank you. I haven't gotten the I haven't gotten the email about MGM's biggest biggest liability yet. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of repeats, which is good. I'm in a one and done that starts this week and goes through the tour championship with strokes purses 20% to make it even with the others. Would you save anyone or play it as normal? I would definitely save. That's all I'd like to say. Um, I think Morikawa in one and done is a little more aggressive than we need to be. If we star a player on the golfer profile, do you access that data? Uh, you're talking about here? So like if you, like if you star Webb Simpson? No, I don't collect any of the custom model or that type of data. Cause I think it's a really slippery slope. Um, you know, there's been plenty, uh, plenty of DFS site scandal for someone who just like, Oh, you know, you're using the custom model. You're, I can see all your lineups. I'll just put those in for the, from the bet. Like that is really bad, really, really bad. So no, I don't collect any custom model data. If you favored a golfer, 
I don't, um, cause somebody said to me, why don't you use the data that is coming from the custom model for projected ownership? And I was like, that is like, uh, that's bad. That's crossing a line in my opinion. So I don't do that. Uh, and then I don't save, I don't save the star information for the same reason. It's just like your, your stuff is saved locally. It's not like on a server or whatever. It's like on your computer. Um, somebody will probably make an ace, especially on that front pin location. I test tells me Rory typically performs well or poorly on Thursdays. Okay. Well, let's find out. Very simple to do. Strokes gained by round. Rory McIlroy, how far how far back do you want to go? We'll go last three years. Uh, round one, he is a 2.32. Round two, he's a 1.85. Round three, he's a 2.1. Round four, 2.29. So, no. Round one's his best round. Um. Not in on Corey Connors. We've spent a lot of oxygen on him recently. Not going to waste any more. He just his his short game is not good enough to out hit or to out putt his or he can't out hit his short game. Is basically what I'm saying. The here there was a couple straight questions about uh, Cameron Davis starting to see a little bit of a bounce back, right? So was really bad to start 2024. The ball striking metrics came back kind of uh, February-ish. And then the putter, like this is, there's still a couple of holes to plug, but it's definitely getting better. I mean, two of his last three events were, were signature events. He finished top 20 in both of them. Actually, all three of his last three were signature events, but the two top 20 events, uh, two top 20s were obviously in the in the Siggies. So that's that's good. Answered a lot of these, which is cool. Um, this says, how cool is it to go from where you were three years ago to cover a master's for a major organization? Um, no, it's awesome. It's sick. It's sick. Seriously. I mean, even go back like seven years where I was, I was making the player's championship video after work in my living room, in my studio, like whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy that you guys care enough, right? Which I love. It's crazy that this community like has grown to the point where this stuff happens. So it's really a thanks to you guys, but no, it's nuts. Um, I don't do a lot. I don't do a lot of reminiscing. I'm not a big like reminiscing guy, but it is pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. <laughs> um, all right. Let me see if I can find some more. Yeah. Oh God. Me. Okay. So Mina's, she will not let me live it down. She's in 28th in the one, in the run and done. I'm in 20th though. So that's, that's good. Yes. She makes all of her own picks. She would never let she, cause she'll pick, she picked like Nick Taylor and Adam Hadwin back to back weeks, uh, which I would never do. Um, yeah, she would never let me pick for her. She's way too proud. Are you going to use anyone in the five K range? Okay. So I think the viable options in the five K range are, Thomas Dietrich, fingers crossed. I'm willing to give it one more chance. Justin Lauer keeps the golf course in front of him. I think that that's pretty good. Sam Ryder's kind of interesting. And then I, I actually believe the best play in the 5K range is uh, Nico Echevarria. I, I think I covered this on, on the Monday show, so I won't spend too much time on it. But he had like a Michael Kim-esque run when he won a couple of years ago, where or last year, I guess it was this time where he missed a bunch of cuts before, missed a bunch of cuts after. His stat profile right now is the best it's been in his career. Very small sample, very low bar, but three straight top 25s, and um, he's 5400 bucks. That's 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 really good. A lot of Glover questions. Let's do a Glover thing real quick then. Whoops. I am worried and have been worried about Lucas Glover for quite some time. Uh, and I still remain that way. So here's the problem. He can't putt. And I know, I know he did. He did. 
For four out of six weeks, he did. But for every other week of his career, he hasn't. And he's back to that. So when you go, I mean, he goes to API and he gains three strokes ball striking. That's awesome. Finishes 30th, like barely better than half the field. It just is such a narrow path for him. Yeah, I actually, so I didn't really think I was going to uh, need to talk about Ludwig. The dude's a stud. The dude, like this is one of the best golf courses in the world for him, right? Just be a great ball striker, be a great driver. He is so good. That stat that I showed, who's been the best player in the world since the Wyndham? It's Ludwig. It's got 13 starts, 1.93. It's special, super special, right? RickRungood.com slash newsletters. Check that out. Also, go sign up for RickRungood.com. I don't know why you wouldn't. I honestly think, like, I love it, and I know I'm biased in the situation, but so good. And only getting better. I've got something coming out that I think you guys are going to be pretty stoked for. Um, I like Adam Hadwin. But don't know why. All right, let's look together. Not putting well. He is accurate. He's pretty decent on longer shots. Hits it actually sneaky far. 46th in driving distance. I'm kind of in on Adam Hadwin. Makes a, he's making a ton of birdies this year. Did I just get snapped into... A team no putt, Adam Hadwin, fourth at Riv. He's obviously volatile, right? I mean, he misses the cut, finishes fourth, finishes 52nd, finishes like he's all over the place. It's not that wouldn't be a bad like top 10 because you could probably get a really good number on it. And if he misses the cut, who cares? You, you didn't spend much, you got a good number on it. Um, because a DFS lineup with him missing the cut would be pretty disastrous. Oh, Harris English 200 to 1 at the Masters. That's kind of interesting. Uh, do you shop odds or always use the same book? I shop when I'm available. It depends where I'm at, right? If I'm in Vegas, I can shop. If I'm in California, uh, a little harder. But um, yeah, I would always shop. But usually I'll just go like in Vegas, Circo just usually has the best line. So I know that. One and done, small contest and leading. Is it simply just go with Scotty? Yeah. The Golden Man Trophy is elite. Like, let's be real. What they've done with the gold boy or whatever is kind of weird and funny, but it's an elite, beautiful trophy. Do, do you know that it's a, uh, I'm going to get this word wrong, but it's an uh, amalgamation, amalgamation. I don't know the word, but like the face of it or the, the body, the swing, it's supposed to be, a little bit of like the first 40 winners or something like that. I don't know. It's weird. Um, really nice base. I actually think it should be a little bit bigger. That's my only, that's my only, my only thing. Rounding out my season long fantasy team. I have can't lay Connors and Henley. Should I choose Sung Jay or day? Yikes. Crap. That stinks. Um, probably Sung Jay, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't crush you if you wanted to play day. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Scotty has a new putter and is rolling the ball very well. Hadn't heard that. Oh, sorry if you covered this already. I was uh, late because I was getting my foot grilled in a George Foreman. <laughs> Eric Cole or Alex Noren in a season long? Eric Cole. Um, oh, Ennis Brook. Did I forget Ennis Brook when I was doing that? Sorry. A lot of these are, we've answered a lot of these. I've talked about a lot of these guys. I'm trying to find like some, something really sick I can dive into. A lot of more cow questions. A lot of more cow questions. We already did that. God, come on. Give me something new. Give me something new. Um, come on. Oh, this stinks. These are all the same. All right, let's do well. All right, there was one, there was a good one about Nico, I guess. I'll I'll look at Nico. I don't. Oh, wrong Nico. I don't want to stop. Like I want to keep going. 
So let's see what we can find. All right. Uh, the question was in regards, is he too wild? Um, probably. So if he is too wild, can he make up for it in other places? Uh, I mean, he's, he's pretty wild. Now, can we get over that? He's losing a lot with the putter. That hurts. The approach plays on the way down. Um, three putts a lot. Talked about that. He doesn't even hit a lot of, he doesn't even use the distance a lot because he gets, kind of gets into a situation where he misses a lot of greens. Doesn't, he's not able to hit greens in two. Yeah, this is probably a tough spot for him, in my opinion. Need someone to make the cut. Um, the uh, Xander. Six tier pool based on odds. Making the cut is more important than finishing. Tier three is on or Scott. I love Adam Scott, but I think you have to go with Ben on there. Tier four is Keegan Hoagie or Keith. I like Hoagie. I wouldn't kill you if you go if you went with Keith. Tier five, Hoygaard or EVR. I think that one's EVR. What's the most ridiculous thing you frequently spend money on? I'm not sure I want to admit this. Oh no. Uh, I a lot of stupid shit. Really? I mean, just I don't know. Do whatever makes you happy. We don't have kids for a reason, right? I will say, so I I'll just I think the the first thing that popped into my head is that I go to a place to get stretched. <laughs> Um, so I was, I have, I've had this like back injury and I had gone to physical therapy in the past for it, but like, it does not rise to that level, but I will go to a place once a week and get like, it's not like physical therapy, but like, it's like, they call it assisted stretching and it's me and like 80 year old women, but I want to get my back ready for golf and I want to be flexible and I play a lot of golf. So that, that is probably, um, <laughs> that was the first thing that popped into my head. That's funny. That's funny. Um, so, so yeah, so when the, when the three and done doesn't fill, it'll just take all the payout percentages and just re resize. Okay, here we go. Have we spoken enough about Matthew Pavon? Probably not on this show, right? Matthew, how does he spell it like that? Okay. I love this guy. I don't love what he did at Bay Hill. Lost four strokes ball striking. Lost five from T to green. But that's the only outlier. Outside of that, look at this stat profile. Outside of Bay Hill, he is very consistent. O almost to a T, he's going to lose a half a stroke around the green over four days, right? I mean, he is, in, and that's across the PGA Tour, the Euro Tour, this is a very consistent profile. API looks like an outlier. You know what else th this reminds me of? It reminds me of Justin Thomas's stat profile, who has gotten back to being very consistent, very elite, and he had that one outlier at Riviera. And it's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I think he's going to bounce back. Boom. Bay Hill T12. It also reminds me of Eric Cole a little bit. Eric Cole's just bizarre outlier. And then he comes right back with a pretty good week. And, and he lost in a place that you kind of expected him to lose at Bay Hill off the tee, right? So I, I think I've seen enough of these profiles to say that that's like a Matthew Pavon outlier. That's my opinion on that. It's up to you guys, but that's my opinion. Yeah, so the Andrew Novak stuff is pretty interesting, right? So he probably should have been in the field last week. He's got three straight top tens. He's feeling, I know for a fact, he's feeling snubbed. And I, I wish, uh, well, I always wonder if guys can keep this going, but he did keep it going from, he did have an off week from Phoenix to Mexico and he finished T eight in both of those. That's good to see gaining basically throughout the bag. That's really good to see. L love all of that. <laughs> uh, okay. We can do the, okay. Okay. Here we go. Now we're getting, we're getting into some good stuff here. Here's Grillo. I love Grillo. A uh, low priced ball striker who has literally figured out the putter. We're, we're, we're deep into this eight out of 10, something like that in which he's, in which he's gained strokes with the putter. Look at the accuracy off the tee 24th in accuracy, eighth in distance from edge of fairway. Of course, he's not very long, but look at how he hits it. So he, he, he makes up for the deficiency of not being long by being a great long iron player. So he comes in from 
farther distances than a lot of other guys, and he's good from them. And now he's added the putting to it. I really like Grillo. The other uh, one that popped up was, you know, I mentioned Justin Lauer as a possible 5K pivot. I said, I said he just keeps it in front of him. Like he doesn't make a lot of big numbers or big mistakes. It's kind of what you see in his stat profile. It's like, yeah, he's like generally pretty good across, across the board. Um, third place finish in Mexico. Doesn't miss a ton of cuts. He missed one at the RSM. He missed one at, at um, Honda. Oh, I Almost went the whole show without calling it Honda. Um, but those like don't really care all about, about that much. I think he's a pretty pretty decent player. <laughs> you guys are funny. Yes, we covered Eric Van Royen. Um, I like to use 36 rounds for the head-to-head matchups. That's mine. I believe it's the most... Um, predictive. Okay. Carson Young, the other Young. I, I, I have a feeling I'm out, but let me see this. Oh no. Sorry. Maybe I was thinking of somebody else. I thought it was a real debacle. It was not. So he finishes. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. So you've got 2024 has been pretty good to Carson Young. Very good ball striker, and that continued into what was basically his worst finish of the year, the T56 at Cognizant, and he lost four strokes around the green there, which is something he used to do a lot, but it seems like he's cleaned that up. So is now that the outlier? You can make the case for that. <laughs> um. Have you ever played Sawgrass? No, but I did play Dyes Valley, which is the course next door. <laughs> Who could you take in a fight, Greg or Patrick? Neither. I'm not a fighter. Um, all right. Here's the Victor deep dive. You know, I'm optimistic that the ball striking is coming back. I am optimistic about that. You know, I think that the last two starts show that. I am a little bit worried about the around the green play. You know, what he had in 2023, um, it's not there. I don't know if it is part of the coaching change. It could just be variance, right? Like, or it could be a couple shots that have gone the wrong way. Maybe he had, been, like, you know, it's, it's tough to say, but I am probably like a five out of 10. And if you guys know, I'm my baseline for a Victor tournament is like a nine out of 10. So that tells you where, where I'm at here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to wrap up with a couple more questions here in a second, real quick, big week. And there's a lot of big weeks coming up. Rickrungood.com has all these tools that I've been showing and I'm constantly making it better for all of us. Go sign up for that. Sign up for my newsletter. It's hundred percent free. I email you fun stuff every single week. Underdog. The code is Rick. Link is in the description. I've tweeted out plays. If you want those, you'll get a deposit match. And um, I just want to support them because they're, they've really improved the product this year. The two contests on splash, there's a tears contest and there is a three and done. Both are open right now. The, the tier one is guaranteed. And then finally, if you want to use that one and done tool, link is in the description. I don't, I don't like tell you stuff I don't believe in, right? I don't have something new every single week that I talk about. This is all stuff I very much believe in. There was a question about this, March Madness. So the most popular video I do every year is this March Madness video, which is crazy. And yes, I'll do it again this year. And I'm already plan I've already got things in the works. 538, where I would normally use the projections from, they don't do sports anymore. So that's not available. But I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve. So don't worry about that. Um, I know selection Sunday is this Sunday. I will try my best to get it up on Sunday night. But realistically, what I want to happen is I want people to fill out brackets and I want data to come in because that's how that's the secret to the whole thing. So Monday is probably more realistic. So on Monday, you're probably going to get a 
a preview video for um uh, blanking on the name of the event next week, Valspar and the March Madness video are probably both going to go out on Monday. Okay. If you had to pick three highly priced golfers to miss cut, who would they be? Rory McElroy, Colin Morikawa, Wyndham Clark. Honorable mention, Jordan Spieth. Oh, I thank you. You're pretty cute yourself. <laughs> I know him. Um, nothing has come out about the Joe Mayo split. And nothing that I can share. All right. Great week. See you all on Twitter. Um, see you guys at the master. So stoked for that. God, it's going to be awesome. Um, I appreciate all of you tuning in. It was a big one. We're going to continue to rock these every single week. I've got to shut this down myself. I'm saying goodbye. Thank you. Good luck.